Traders, how are you with Marcello? Today we're doing the recap of what happened in the markets last week, May 29th. A lot of things going on. We have GameStop launching their own wallet for NFTs and cryptos. We have the SWIFT system, which is the international intergovernmental system that everybody uses to send money. They're testing crypto payments now to be able to go ahead and launch what I have so passionately called the government coin. And we also have even more countries that are restricting the exports of their food. Let's get started. First, let me say a huge thank you to all of you guys that donated. I have uh, my sister's son is in the hospital. He was just born to all of you guys that were able to donate five bucks or a hundred bucks or 50 bucks. I know if you guys had a child and it was, you didn't know what to do because it was in the hospital. I'm already helping a lot. But um, if you can spare five bucks, 15 bucks, 50 bucks, go to, uh, I'll put the link here, concoursodta.com. It'll take you to the GoFund page. And it'll help a lot. So thank you to all you guys that were able to donate overall for the week. Getting to the point at hand, markets had the best week since November 2020. All the markets in the U.S. above six percent, in addition to Canada being positive over two percent. Markets in Europe as well, very extremely, very very positive, very very positive. Latin America also higher, and even Africa and the Middle East, as well as the far far east and Asia, all the markets extremely positive. Bitcoin and cryptocurrency news, GameStop, if you guys remember the little manipulation that was going on with the Redditors and GameStop, well, GameStop now is starting a wallet for cryptos and NFTs. I think I'm going to do a video this week about why NFTs are a scam and why it's also the future, which I think would be interesting because most of you guys don't know anything about our NFTs or haven't been in the space at all. Luna 2.0 has opened as well. If you guys remember, we had a situation where we had the absolute crypto collapse of Luna, which is a crypto and also uh, um, a stable coin, which is uh, kind of to put it in very general terms for those of you guys that aren't in the market or in the crypto market. It's a crypto connected to a currency, essentially. It's a complicated system with an algorithm, but it collapsed and literally went to zero. Unfortunately, a lot of people lost a lot of money and now the the swindling owner and founder of Luna started Luna 2.0. It opened at $30 and it immediately crashed 80%. So as I always told you guys, it's not that you can't make money in crypto, but you have to be careful because obviously there isn't any regulation and these kind of things can happen. I'll stick with my silver and futures trading. Thank you very much. Swift, which is the intercontinental international payment system that everybody uses. If you don't know, if you send a wire to someone bank to bank, from Russia to Brazil, Brazil to Germany, Germany to China, China to the US. Anytime you send a wire, it always goes through the SWIFT system. Now they are testing inter, uh, in Sp I always think of the word in Spanish because I do the Spanish videos first, but international payments between countries with digital assets like the CBDCs, which are the central bank digital currencies, otherwise known as my name for them, government coins. So we're definitely moving in that direction. As I always told you guys from the beginning, I think the end game for cryptos are the government coins. Doesn't mean that Bitcoin won't exist. It'll go up and down. It'll most likely make record highs again, but it's definitely going to be the, 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 the government coins. Bitcoin for the week down 1.44%, just a touch under 39,000. For the year so far, it's down 38%. Commodities, Malaysia and India now are starting to report that they're going to be restricting their food exports. Malaysia is going to start restricting, prohibiting completely the, the exports of chicken starting in June. Affects Singapore, which is one of the richest countries in the world because they buy the chicken from Malaysia. Malaysia is in a third world country. I don't know if you, I don't know if we have kind of the, the, the label of second world, but I would call Malaysia second world. Whereas Singapore is one of the richest countries in the world, and obviously they buy a lot of food and mostly chickens for their main dishes there in, in Malaysia. India, which is the second producer of sugar, is going to cap the sugar exports at 10 million tons for the current season in another attempt to try to stabilize the inflation and stabilize the domestic prices. This is a big problem, a big problem, because when countries were so interconnected now in the world, we buy fertilizer from countries overseas. Everybody relies on everybody. Right. So if you if you're not from a country that produces food, 
which, you know, the U.S., we don't have to worry about that because we're an exporter of food. We're a big producer of food. It's going to be a big problem because this is going to cause inflation to continue to increase because if you can't find a certain product, it's simple to supply and demand. If countries start to restrict the exports of certain food items, there's going to be less food items. If there's less food items and the demand is the same, even if the demand increases because of the recovery after COVID and everything, that's going to increase prices even more of everything. So you can see we still have a lot of uh, not buying pressure, but a lot of up pressure when it comes to the prices still. One of the things I thought was really interesting, if you guys see the, uh, the you should see the little infographic there from Statista, Statista.com, the, how the price of a hamburger has changed, the ingredients. I took the average, and if you guys are listening on the podcast, you know, it's, it's uh, you know, uh, let me open it here and I'll tell you, I'll kind of read it off to you guys if you guys are listening. The bread has gone up over 10%, 10.1. Lettuce is up 12.7. The tomatoes only 0.4. Bacon is 17.17, 17.7, excuse me. Ground beef, 15%. And then the sauce, like the mayonnaise and mustard, has gone up 9.2%. I did the average, if I remember correctly, about 12 or 13%. The amount at which the ingredients of a hamburger has increased from April 2021 to April 2022. But remember that the government is telling us that the inflation rate is only 8.5. Just keep that in mind. The global energy crisis is pushing people towards nuclear energy, especially the commodity, the, the raw commodity that people use in nuclear power plants, which is called uranium. Prices jumped to 11 year high just from last year to now, basically April to April from last year to this year went from $28 to $64. And that's made the situation even worse with the situation with the Russian Ukraine war. So there are companies that mine uranium, just so you know. Fertilizer prices are starting to come down. They've gone down 30%. A lot of people are talking about a buyer's pullback. So they're saying that this is just a pullback for the continuation to the upside, but it's still up 87% from where it was before the pandemic, for example. The June spot price in my Humble abode of Tampa, where I grew up, went up, uh, went down 30%, as I mentioned to you guys, but the expectation is that they're going to continue to increase. Gas prices are at a record high, $4.59 as a national average. It keeps increasing day after day after day. One of the things, because you, you guys know I travel, if you're new to the channel, I've been traveling around the world now, I think for about 10 years or so. Started traveling when I was 25, maybe 13, 14 years, I forget the, the times, but I just filled up my Ford Explorer. I got a Ford Explorer ST, 400 horsepower. I drive it like a maniac, just like any irresponsible young man, young, young man would do. And I filled it up with 40 bucks. Let me do the math here again. It was 157 pesos, 157,000 Colombian pesos. And if I convert that into dollars, it was $40. If I were to fill up that same tank in the United States, it would be literally minimum $80, $90. Because remember that gas prices have gone up under the Biden administration from $1.50, $1.70, something along those lines, all the way up now to a record high. The reason why I'm mentioning this is because if you're able to work online, start your side hustle, or you don't have to go to the office, you may want to think about moving overseas because it's significantly cheaper to live overseas, especially with the dollar being so high right now. U.S. crude for the week, both went up, both international and in and, and the U.S., 4 and 6%, a little bit higher of both of those. Bank of America, or excuse me, Bank of Canada, the official bank, the, the central bank of Canada has decided to sell all of its gold reserves starting in the 2000s. The only G7 country that doesn't have any gold. And one of the things I found unusual is that I always tell you guys to pay attention to what people do, not what they say. Right? I've done these videos where I talked about, I think a year and a half ago, where we had Warren Buffett selling all his stock, Bill Gates selling all his stock. Right. So it's like, why are these people selling all their stock when CNBC and everybody else, all the analysts are saying that the market's going to continue going higher? Well, now we can see the big drops that we've seen. So on that note, for example, we have China and, and Russia and other countries starting to buy more and more gold, whereas a country like Canada is selling all their gold. So it's going to be interesting to see who ends up uh, positive or who ends up right in the end. And remember, if you guys are listening to the podcast, you guys can look me up. Just look up uh, Marcello Arambidi, Trader should come up there automatically. And if you guys are not listening to the podcast, you can just search for the podcast wherever you guys listen to your podcast at Day Trading Academy and it'll come right up. According to David Doge, which is the former Bank of Canada and senior advisor to Bennett Jones LLC, 
He's saying that gold is an outdated commodity and the bank has a right to get rid of its gold reserves and stated that Bitcoin has no place in Bank of Canada's balance sheets, even though he did not reject cryptos completely. They'll probably have a dollar coin coming out soon as well. Precious metals a little bit higher. Gold got to 1855, while silver got to $22.22. The, remember that the dollar hit a 20 year high, the index over the last four weeks, for example finally came down quite a bit since a lot of commodities are listed in dollars, including oil, for example. If the dollar comes down, a lot of these commodities go up because they're an inverse relationship. Financial and banking news, consumer spending, which remember, I always mention this every time I do these videos every week for you, is the single most important number when it comes to the economy for most countries around the world. For most, I mean most developed countries. So everybody outside of Africa, and, and a few countries in Asia, for example, that aren't at, as developed. In the US, the consumer spending is close to 70% of the economy, and we had an increase in that spending last month of 0.9%. So it seems like even though we have this huge inflation problem where the cost of everything is absolutely exploding, it, we are still spending more. Now, if you look into the numbers, what's actually happening is people are actually spending more because the prices are higher not because they're actually spending more money. So it's not the economy is doing well or the consumer, which is 70% of the economy is actually spending more money. They're just actually paying higher prices even though they're spending less. So it's not really a good indicator, even though, as we talked about before, the government is always gonna talk about how great things are when there's positive numbers, right? Treasury Department announced that they're gonna uh, bar Russia. They're gonna prohibit Russia for paying bondholders through US banks. This puts Russia in a huge, risk because they may default on their debt that's going to take effect on wednesday we're going to see if maybe russia retaliates as well because they stated remember that if anybody stops them or anybody tries to help ukraine they're literally going to do something extremely extremely not bueno reserve bank of new zealand raised its rates for the fifth time in a row they're at two percent now they raised them 50 basis points and in political news ukraine is at the top of the agenda at the World Economic Forum in Davos. All of the political leaders in the political world that want to launch the communist government, the world government, they had you, the Ukrainian... Don't, I'm going to put on the conspiracy hat on. Don't worry, it'll come soon. Ukrainian President Zelensky addressed the leader saying that they're at a turning point where the world shouldn't allow Russia's brute force to win. Remember that the reason this war never needed to happen. And the reason why it happened is because the United States decided to poke the bear, which is Russia. And remember that we're also continuing to finance the war in Russia by buying Russian oil. Just keep that in mind, because the Biden administration doesn't want to buy oil from Canada, for example. It prefers to buy it from dictators and maniacs like Iran and Venezuela. Colombia has elections this week. They are deciding whether they're going to vote for their communist called Petro. He's in the lead with 36%. He's very similar, for example, to Chavez and how Chavez destroyed the economy in Venezuela. Economic news, the manufacturing activity in Japan grew at its slowest pace in May, slowest pace in three months. Obviously, again, the lockdowns in China because of the pandemic of COVID. We also have the supply chain disruptions, et cetera, et cetera. So it's obviously affecting a lot of economies around the world. The Eurozone may flash purchasing power index, which is the PMI, went down as well, which means that the business growth across the entire Eurozone slowed. So notice how we're starting to have some indicators that the economy isn't doing as well as expected. Singapore didn't grow as expected either. Singapore, while not one of the largest economies in the world, it is the, one of the richest economies in the world, and I believe the fifth or seventh largest financial hub in the world. Germany narrowly avoided a recession by growing in quarter one by 0.2%, while France, which is the third largest economy in Europe after Germany and the UK, they officially went into a recession. And one of the things that's extremely concerning also in the U.S. with the, the absolute explosion of interest rates, new home sales have plummeted. And we have a lot of fears now that we're going to hop into a recession. New home sales have collapsed 16 percent in April. And one of the things if you guys show you guys should be able to see the prices of houses for the last 10 years from 2012 to 2022. And I wanted to show this to you because this is an important lesson. The price of a home, a single family home where a single family lives has gone up by over 97 percent. So let's just call it 100%. Has your salary gone up by 100% over the last 10 years where you work, right? This is why it's really important that you guys, if you haven't started already, start a side hustle. 
do some YouTube videos, learn how to trade, invest in real estate, do something because things are going to get really bad. And if you don't start to make a little bit of extra money now, then you're not going to have the opportunity later because the economy is going to be so bad. And remember that the housing market, I looked up the number, it's 17.7% in 2021. So we have about 18% of the economy now going into collapse which is going to reverberate throughout the entire economy in the US. The housing bubble is about to pop where the unsold inventory of new houses also spikes by its most ever. Construction costs are exploding as well. So not only are the new houses piling up, but a lot of people are stopping to build the houses as well. And since there isn't that much demand to buy a house now because the demand is significantly going down, we literally have construction costs and no new houses being built or less houses, let's say, being built or at the same time, the inventory is starting to, to creep up as well. Corporate news, Starbucks is officially leaving Russia. Surprise! After literally every other Western company has done so as well. McDonald's, remember, they announced it as well. Snap collapsed over 43%, sending chills through the industry when they reported that they weren't going to have as good results in quarter two due to the collapse of the ad revenue. That sent a lot of the companies, tech companies that rely on ad revenue like Facebook and Google and Twitter down five, six, seven percent, which is impressive that the market still went up so high because a lot of these companies are so big. They're really big percentages of the stock market. Pinterest, also another social media firm relying on advertising, went down by over 23 percent. But in times of crisis, right, we also have good opportunities as well. Dollar General and Dollar Tree Dollar General went up by almost 14%, while Dollar Tree went up almost 22%, reporting that their sales growth are in double digits. In addition to that, these companies, which are dollar stores, right? So lower cost people now, they have a lot less money to spend because of the explosion in, in prices. They're going to the dollar store to be able to buy stuff. So they're opening new stores, they're having great results, so they've gone up quite a bit. Macy's had blowout earnings as well. Remember that Macy's owns Bloomingdale's. Their revenue went up by 14%, while Alibaba, which is the huge technology company out of China, their stock in Hong Kong went up by 12.21% after they crushed earnings. Trade news, the UK is now holding talks with Ukraine to be able to find out how they can get the grains out of the country. Remember that Ukraine is known as one of the breadbaskets of the world because the amount of food they produce and export in addition to the fertilizer. And remember that when the war started, Russia just literally blocked all their traffic, including their ports. It's going to cause severe food shortages in places like Asia and Africa. In technology, Russian Israeli billionaire Yudi Milner is offering $1 million for the best design of a new messaging and transmitting system to try to establish alien contact. Some say it's a great idea. The passed away physicist, famous Stephen Hawking said, probably shouldn't contact aliens with more advanced technology than us because they're gonna come and just destroy humanity. Investment news, a poll conducted by Vistage Worldwide Inc. is saying that 57% of small business in the United States, remember that 50, the biggest employers of people in the United States is small businesses. They are predicting a recession over the next year. High inflation, again, supply chain problems, labor shortages. If people can't find workers to work, they have to offer more money to be able to find workers. So companies then compete for the workers, which offer more and more money. That continues to add pressure to the increasing prices in addition, for example, to the supply chain issues, right? If you can't find a product, the supply of the product, there isn't enough product, you're gonna pay more for it, right? Or people are gonna start to look for the product more aggressively, which increases essentially the demand. And in addition to that, obviously, we have the shortages where you just can't find stuff anymore. Conspiracy Marcello. Preppers were right. International events, Hong Kong residents are leaving the city far greater numbers in 2022. Hong Kong lost 93,000 citizens or residents, let's just say in 2020 and also 23,000 in 2021, leaving a lot of uh, very professional talent that's leaving. A lot of them are going to Singapore in addition to Canada and the UK from their new visa program. And one of the things that was really cool this week is an offshore of a village called Noli in Italy's Lu Li Ligeria region. They're creating six large clear domes that are, that are moored or connected to the ocean floor where they're growing herbs, vegetables, and flowers just 130 feet from the land. They're calling them Nemo's Garden. 
And they're saying that the ocean's favorable environmental qualities, also natural pest control, because they're not going to swim through the ocean and get to these plants to be able to eat them, is a great way to be able to supply food for coastal populations, which I thought was really cool. And if you guys remember that building that collapsed in Fort Lauderdale, now we have a Dubai developer that's deciding to buy the collapsed building site for $120 million. Miami is just booming. And in natural disasters, the Red River Valley in the U.S. states of Minnesota and North Dakota, as well as the Canadian province of Manitoba, suffering some of the worst flooding in a decade. This comes after a year of having extreme drought. If you guys remember, starting in 2020 during the pandemic, I told you guys next 10 years, we're going to see social problems, economic problems. Um, and a lot of environmental problems. And it's definitely starting to happen. Disastrous heat waves in Pakistan and India baked both countries. India had a serious problem with shortages due to the fact that since the electricity demand spiked by so high, they ran out of their coal and they just didn't have any coal to continue to burn to be able to generate the electricity. And then they even have heavy rains as well in Bangladesh and India. This is going all, you know, I don't report this every week, but it's just like, okay, into the world, Marcello. All right, we understand. So that's the news for this week, guys. Let me know if you guys have any questions. Don't forget to subscribe. Leave your like. Hasn't gone up in price yet. We'll see you next week.